The next speaker is Mr. Sean Mitra. He's the investor and chief business officer of Technosphere. And his uh, talk is going to be specifically focused on how to improve the industrial product efficiency. Sean? Good afternoon. So, you know, perfect segue from where my previous speaker, Akulur, he left. I'm going to talk about how do you actually kickstart some of these projects. And I'm also going to focus on production efficiency. What Sandeep here talked about, the production efficiency, especially in industrial IoT. So my presentation has three parts. The first is about what trends we are seeing on the industry. And my personal background is more on the customer acquisition, customer adoption of some of these IoT technologies. So I'm going to share how that's playing out. And then look at two or three simple case studies, simple use cases that we have used in the Indian industry manufacturing companies. And then if you are a startup or an enterprise IoT rollout person, how do you kickstart some of these projects and then from pilots to scale? So three broad categories. Now, fundamentally, this is what we believe, and you know, I strongly believe that IoT is, now that the physical world is becoming part of the digital world. So Michael Porter, you know, from Harvard, he talks about three different waves in IT. The first wave was when we automated using EDP, all of our you know, accounting inside the office. So that was in 70s, early 80s, maybe. Then the next wave was when, as companies, we connected with our customers and also with our suppliers. So 90s, you know, SAP, Ariba, Oracle, all of that was the second wave of IT. And he says the third wave, which is IoT, is going to be even bigger than the first and second waves, and there will be a lot of new companies that will get created. So, and this is going to pan out over the next 10 to 12 years. And as per McKinsey, if you look at the value chain of IoT, 10% uh, is on the hardware gateway side, 50 to 60%, 50 55% is actually on the analytics side. Uh, systems integration, people who put it all together is about, I think, 10 or 15%, and 10% is on the cloud infrastructure. I hope it added up to 100%. So that's sort of the breakup. So from an industrial IoT adoption, where, where, do we, where do we stand today? You know, I've got the backdrop of a storm. So we believe that in the IoT industry, all of us over the last couple of years, we are hearing a lot about IoT is because there is a perfect storm in the industry. You know, we have seen the prices of hardware coming down. You have now got access to unlimited data through cloud. And then you also have connectivity through wireless or mobile are pretty ubiquitous everywhere. So these three forces are really leading to acceleration of IoT. Now from an industrial IoT standpoint, I would say three or four years back, we had heard a lot about industrial IoT platforms, and we still, I mean, there are a lot of companies that they are taking that sort of approach. Now I'm with Technosphere, and what we have looked at when we started meeting a lot of customers, a lot of them in India, of course in the US also, a lot of times, uh, we found it very difficult to justify the ROI and the business case to roll out a large IoT platform. However, on the other hand, the industry was crying for a lot of help for specific, simple use cases. Use cases like, hey, you know, this machine, uh, if it goes down, then, you know, my whole production stops and we lose, you know, X dollars or X rupees. Can you, can you do some predictive maintenance? Or I have a pellet meal and uh, you know, it goes downstream and jams the whole production, so I have to stop it. So those are the type of examples we are seeing. Now, so we have taken a slightly different approach. So we, we have taken more of a bottom-up approach where we look at use cases of our customers, try to understand them, try to use IoT technology and solve and generate a quick ROI on those. Now, before I go to this, 
from, from an IoT perspective, there are broadly three areas. So every IoT project or every IoT initiative only has three things that it wants to achieve. Either you are trying to improve the asset utilization. The asset could be you know, a turbine or you know, it could be a car or it could be a fleet or whatever. Or you are trying to offer a new differentiated service or a product, like a smart product, smart TV, whatever. Or the third option could be you're trying to transform the customer engagement. So you were selling a product, now can you offer it as a pay-as-you-go service? So you have transformed your customer engagement. Insurance industry, again, you know, where you are now seeing uh, uh, usage-based insurance. You know, so it's a very differentiated business model. So pretty much all IoT initiatives will fall in these three different categories. When you go to industrial IoT, so the first one, even though we're talking asset tracking, it's really asset management, so it does include the maintenance. Now these are the only, again, you know, four broad categories where most of the industrial IoT projects will fall. So, you know, asset tracking, life cycle management, that pretty much asset management. Uh, machine productivity monitoring. So we are seeing a lot of requests for this that, hey, I have a small factory or I have a medium-sized factory and there are you know, 40 machines in my factory, they're all calibrated for different levels of productivity. These are different machines. But I really don't know. I know the end of the day factory output, but I really don't know which machine has operated at its calibrated level and were there any variations during the day. Okay? Now, can you use sensor technology to give me that sort of insight because that can throw up a lot of interesting uh, interventions that the management can take. Ongoing quality management, you can, you know, you can do a good job there. Uh, worker safety and productivity. So we are seeing a lot of interest uh, pretty much all over, uh, you know, of course, India and uh, uh, Western world also uh, for employee safety, you know, uh, wearables, pendant, other things, you know, how can you use? So I'll just share some simple examples from this and how we have approached this. So what we did was, you know, so we, uh, we were more of a services company moving more and more towards solutions, right? And uh, we started interacting with customers, and every time you go to a customer, there is a very different use case. So you might say maintenance or pre predictive maintenance, preventive maintenance, whatever, but the machines are different, the environment conditions are different, uh, different, same industry, different machines, a lot of different variables. So what we did was we took a Lego block approach. So we looked at the whole industrial, I mean, IoT value chain. So you can see you have on one side all the various uh, sensors, different types of sensors, then different types of uh, communication uh, technologies, protocols, input out interfaces, and uh, finally to the cloud. Okay, and I've, I've kept it at the cloud level. I have not really taken it to the whole, the analytics level and everything. Okay? So we looked at this value chain and we've, we, we, we designed a whole Lego block sort of an approach where we are able to deliver within six weeks a live industrial grade project deployed at the customer side. So we have all these pieces, these are all industrial grade. Uh, we have designed for all different combinations, different form factors, different enclosures for different industries. So if a customer says, hey, you know, I'm a chemical factory, I'm looking for this type of solution, within six weeks we are able to deploy you know, 10, 20 units. But these are industrial grade, so if they want to scale, they can actually take it to 1,000, 10,000, whatever they want. Sometimes when they are scaling, we might want to optimize the device further. So this is, this is the product that we have, uh, this is one of the form factors, the most prevalent one. And we have, uh, you know, all the various modules for different uh, protocols, uh, different data inputs, uh, some of the sensors we have already included inside, uh, especially for industrial, et cetera. And now what we're doing is we're taking the use cases uh, and again, you know, on the software side, uh, we do have all the stacks to integrate with Azure, uh, Bluemix, and AWS. So if our customer is a Microsoft shop, you know, we give them the Azure solution. So we have basically taken the whole uh, IoT value chain and come up with this Lego block approach for quick live industrial grade pilots. This is just a little more specification on that. Uh, especially on the industrial IoT, we have some of the sensors also built inside and it does support all the different protocols. Uh, machine productivity monitoring, so, you know, like I mentioned, you know, a lot of companies want to know uh, how my machines are producing vis-a-vis -vis their calibrated levels. 
and is there a variation? Are they always performing optimal level or is there variation? And a lot of times we have found that there are workers who might be operating that particular machine at 80% or 75% because uh, they are able to get better quality product. There are less errors. But management might not know. But that 80% sort of then defines you know, the production for the whole assembly line or for the whole uh, factory. So in this case, uh, this is again you know, a live uh, customer, a fairly large name um, in, in the Bangalore area. So all the examples that we have are uh, local Indian customers. And uh, in this case, it was uh, for, man you know, again, monitoring of uh, packaging the productivity. So there were two sensors. I've used uh, one form of uh, the same whiz blocks. And I don't know, can I click on this link somehow? Oh, okay. No, go back, go back to the same slide. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I think I'll show the link later. So again, on predictive maintenance, you know, different types of uh, uh, inputs that can come. Either you can design the maintenance around vibration or it could be a sound uh, difference in sound. Okay, a lot of ultrasound technology you can use. In some cases, it could be temperature beyond a certain parameter. Okay. So we, have, we are approaching it more with uh, simple use cases. I am able to generate ROI very quickly. A customer is happy, and then if they are happy with one site, then they can scale it up into you know, other factories, other machines. And this is just a, a representation of uh, you know, how you would do the preventive maintenance solution. Can we, can you click on the first one? First link, please. Sorry, it's okay. Are you able to click or? That's fine, don't worry. So these are just links and uh, you know, we have a live uh, LoRa based demo for productivity, okay. Productivity monitoring, so it, ha it has live data, so you know, we can see. Uh, again, yeah, so this is a real live uh, LoRa based uh, solution that we have. Yeah. Okay, go back. Then the other area where again we are seeing a lot of uh, need from the industry is employee safety. Uh, you know, different companies are approaching us uh, with different uh, types of uh, safety needs, uh, chemical hazards, uh, physical or biological, whatever. Uh, again, for a fairly large brand name, we have uh, done a complete industrial watch that does uh, all the vitals as well as uh, uses accelerometer to see if there is a, a sudden fall of an operator. Uh, and you are, we are using LoRa technology, so it, it, it also, uh, through triangulation, we can tell exactly where it happened. So these are a lot of the simple examples that we are seeing, and I think it's still early days. These are platforms. Uh, when I say a variable, it's, to me, it's more like a platform, and you can keep adding more and more uh, features to it and make it more rich. Okay? And so far, you know, I have not gone into the whole analytic side. A lot of what we believe is, uh, I mean, when, when, when a lot of the platforms, they will they will start competing with the AWS of the world, Azure, uh, and you know, IBM, because they're also coming. And uh, in today's, uh, you know, so you know, I'm more on the software side. Uh, that's where I come from. Uh, with the democratization of IT, one of the big changes also that is happening, so I talked about the other three, you know, the perfect storm, but the other big piece is the whole API economy, okay? So earlier when you have to give a solution for a hospital or a hotel, you would design the whole thing and go and you know, go through a long sales cycle, top-down approach, right? Now in the API economy, everything is finally going to the cloud. And everything you can connect through API. So one is you know, taking a big platform approach and you know, going through that whole top-down approach. We are taking more of a bottoms-up approach because use case one is in the cloud, use case two is in the cloud, everything is finally on the cloud. Okay, and you can connect. And you know, whether it's Microsoft or AWS, I mean, they, they give you enough capability where you can start doing a lot of analytics. And again, you can align it with the customer adoption. Because a uh, lot of companies today, let's say, you know, they are more in the preventive maintenance mode. 
hopefully, or unless it's a you know very critical equipment like a plane or something, uh, you'll go into predictive maintenance. But gradually, we'll move in that direction. So this is just to summarize, uh, you know, from a learning standpoint, whether you are a startup in the IoT space or an industrial IoT enterprise customer who is looking at how do I kickstart some of these projects. These are the key learnings. So we believe you can start a lot of these things at a use case level because it's easy to justify business case. Uh, the ROIs are very uh, clear and easy. Okay, but define. You know, yeah, make sure you have a very defined business case. Initiate an end-to-end -end pilot project with live data. So do not spend too much effort with smaller POCs on you know Raspberry Pi, Arduino, etc. Uh, we believe that uh, you should do a pilot with live data, and today it's, it's you know there are a lot of these type of things which are available, uh, and the whole stack on cloud which is available for you to do these things. Okay. And once you have done, proven it to the you know the plant and the management, etc. You collect, you should collect the data for two or three months. Then you can see the power of the data because now you have enough data to do other things, and then you can decide on the larger rollout. And at that stage is when you can involve other stakeholders from, you know, IT department uh, and others. Okay, so a lot of times we have seen a lot of the simple use cases. The sales cycles are faster, and usually uh, IT is like, okay, yeah, we'll we'll just involve the IT a little bit. Okay, so it's not. But when you take a platform approach, it's a very very different customer adoption cycle, you know. All of a sudden it's more IT's center and then they will invite, you know, all the biggies, you know, hey, everybody has got a platform. So it's a very different approach. Okay. And then once you have rolled it out or, you know, once you have done the data for two or three months and depending on what the use case is, you can further optimize the device based on the ground findings. So, you know, you're doing a 10 units or 20, 50 units, it's okay. Uh, there are still you know, some efficiency that you can gain. But if you are now taking it to, you know, thousands of devices to be rolled out in, you know, all over your factories or machines, uh, so every bit of optimization uh, will help. So this, this is just a summary of uh, some of the projects that, you know, my previous speaker mentioned and we all, I mean, our experience with all these industrial customers have been, uh, there's just, you know, plethora of uh, different types of use cases they throw at us. So we said, okay, fine. You know, we'll just take a very Lego block sort of an approach, uh, do a you know pilot, uh, prove it within five to six weeks, a live pilot. You know, it's an industrial grade stuff, not uh, you know commercial and all that. Uh, and then from there, scale the project. And at scaling, then you should have some data. Uh, you'll see the business case and all of that. That brings to my end. So thank you. Thank you, Sean. This is a kind of a perfect cheat sheet <laughs> for industrial IoT projects for all the startups. So we, we have time for two questions, please. I see more than two hands. Uh, so considering uh, uh, you have like thousand pieces, uh, you do various kind of uh, uh, solutions, right? So uh, considering you have thousand in ke chemical, thousand in metal industry, uh, Considering so much diversity, how do you give uh, after sales support and maintenance support? Considering you have so much uh, diversity and employees keep changing. So after sales support, I think, I mean, our relationships are more with these companies. So they have internal teams who do the rollout, etc. And then uh, from our stand, so a lot of these gadgets we can we can do like firmware upgrades, etc. Remotely. Yeah. Uh, Bhaskar is our CEO and. Uh, Place the CTO role. Bhaskar, do you want to add anything to this? Uh, you have, there's a mic there. Yeah, Bhaskar. Our end customers who deploy thousands are, are definitely large and they have a good you know, maintenance infrastructure on one side. And then, you know, there is also, and these products cannot be just, you know, those who fail. Our customers want us to make sure that, you know, we have uh, evaluated the MTPF, the failure rates, and we have a clear maintenance plan, a repair plan, and spares uh, stocking. All of that is a part of a package when we talk to the customer. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, my question yeah. is... Uh, oh, 
sorry. Regarding the interface of the startup world with the real enterprises, where industrial IoT is happening, that's the domain which uh, startup world may not be very mm -hmm. familiar with. Again, the technology is coming out of from the startup world. Yeah. Will not be very familiar with the uh, uh, domain. <laughs> the, uh, domain. Now, how to bridge this system? What kind of challenges you have yes. faced? Because it's a so, very important aspect of it. So, so, I think and that's exactly what I'm talking about, democratization of IT. Okay? So, if you look at Ola, Uber, a very different industry, right? Earlier, if you have to drive a taxi, either, you know, there are these, you know, big taxi companies, right? They used to have their own, you know, uh, systems and everything, right? Now, anybody can, you know, do that, right? So again, when you talk about domain, yes, if you're trying to do a complete uh, connected machine uh, platform and, you know, do a top-down, yes, you need a lot of domain. Yeah, but if you are, I mean, democratization of IT, you know, within, I would say within two months on these tags, you can, you can create pretty strong analytics framework. So it, it is completely democratized that way. But until we work on the real data. Sorry. Gentlemen, we unfortunately are running out of time. Please okay. take your question offline. Yeah, thank you. Right? So sure. thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sean. I would like to invite Niranjan, our executive council member of IESA, to come in and hand over a token of appreciation, please.